Yeah, I would like to talk about a recent trend uh, that can be observed on the internet. And this is that more and more uh, online services require a phone number for sign up. And in my talk, I would like to identify um, a few of the challenges um, with regards to uh, privacy when uh, using the phone number as the unique identifier for, for example, a social network. So there are many um, online services where you have to type in a phone number, um, often for uh, account security reasons, so that if you forget your password, you can um, they can send you an SMS with a restore code and you're able to get back into your uh, account. And there are also smartphone messengers and other social networks, um, mostly based uh, on, on smartphone apps, that rely completely on, on phone numbers as unique identifiers. And they don't require you to, to set up a username and a password. They just want to have a, a phone number from you and then um, the this, uh, this social network and the interaction with your, um, with your friends uh, happens automatically like magic in the background. There are a few good reasons for um, service providers to rely on phone numbers. Um, first, of course, um, fake profiles are more difficult to, um, to create. So there's a SIM card required and usually um, one has one SIM card and uh, it's not possible to uh, create an arbitrary number of um, fake accounts without having access to um, SIM cards. It's a quite stable identifier, so uh, people t tend to, to keep their phone numbers for, for many years. And so, um, for example, for account security, um, it enables uh, f service providers to send the restore codes to some very stable um, yeah, phone number. On the other side, uh, with regards to, to privacy, of course, it's uh, more a problem. So uh, anonymous accounts are more difficult to create. So um, in many countries, um, it's required to um, to register uh, SIM cards. So in Austria, it's still possible to uh, just uh, go to some supermarket and buy a completely anonymous uh, SIM card. But uh, we'll see what the future brings and um, different uh, registration ideas um, came to some politicians in the, in the past. So yeah, it will be more difficult to um, get anonymous SIM cards in the future. And um, another problem for, for privacy is that it's a very powerful um, source for, for social graphs um, when you are able to upload um, the address book of a user because uh, with all the address books in combination, um, a service provider can build a social graph who um, knows whom and um, yeah, you can build the entire social graph of a community by uh, uploading the, the phone book. I would like to talk about uh, two um, different problems when it comes to, to privacy. The first one is linking phone numbers to humans and how easy it is uh, to link um, information from different social networks um, using this unique identifier and yeah, combining them. And the second one is privacy aware um, discovery, user discovery in messenger apps. So the problem of uploading the phone book, um, how is it possible to do this in a uh, privacy aware uh, way? So when it comes to the first um, problem, the, the linking, when you have a phone number, there are several different services that uh, allow you to do some kind of reverse phone uh, number search. So in Austria, for example, there's this uh, telephone ABC website that allows you to type in a phone number and then they uh, give you uh, the, the name and even the address of the person behind this number. Of course, this only works uh, for numbers that show up in the phone book. So that's quite limited use nowadays because um, usually um, new phone numbers are not in the phone book anymore. There are different uh, services, uh, for example, the white uh, pages for the US. But again, um, the coverage is not very good and um, it's, it's quite difficult to find someone and do the reverse um, analysis. But there is another service that um, has a much better uh, phone number um, reverse search that many people don't know about. And um, often they don't know that they are searchable through the service. 
and that's this little um, search bar in Facebook that allows you to type in phone numbers and um, they give you the uh, Facebook account that is behind this uh, phone number. And if you say, well, that's not a problem for me because my phone number is not set to public or is not even set to visible for my friends, so nobody can search my profile through the phone um, uh, by the phone number, then this is a wrong assumption because um, it's another setting that controls this, and it's hidden in the privacy settings page um, of Facebook. So. Uh, as long as you have uh, a phone number registered uh, within Facebook, and most people have because Facebook uh, shows you this next screen that says, make your account more secure, uh, give us your phone number and we can restore it um, in the future when you forget your password, and so on. And all these phone numbers are actually stored for this reverse search, uh, as long as the users don't uh, go uh, there and, and opt out in the, in the privacy settings. And we did a joint uh, research um, on this number crawling in Facebook. So we did a large scale study and implemented some um, proof of concept crawler for Facebook accounts using these phone numbers and um, tried this with uh, arbitrary phone number ranges uh, in the US and in South Korea. So it was a joint research of the Joseph Russell Center and the SKKU uh, University in South Korea. And um, we did this over a period of uh, two weeks uh, with over 200,000 possible phone numbers. Of course, not all of the uh, phone numbers are actually registered uh, to uh, Facebook. And uh, in the US, uh, landline numbers and mobile numbers are mixed. So um, most of these phone numbers um, aren't actually registered to Facebook. But still, um, for, uh, for the US, more than 25,000. And for South Korea, more than um, um, 50,000 Facebook profiles uh, showed up. Um, this required uh, um, as around um, 50 Facebook profiles um, and the, the anti-crawling -crawl, uh, measures of Facebook are quite weak and uh, with a very limited number of uh, Facebook accounts it's very possible to uh, crawl a large number of, of Facebook accounts. Um, we also reported this to Facebook um, but they are still of the opinion that this is a feature and not a bug. And um, yeah, it's, it should behave like this. Another problem is now um, linking um, data um, from different uh, social networks. So um, you might remember one of my talks on, on WhatsApp uh, in the last few years. Um, we um, looked at all the uh, status messages of um, WhatsApp uh, accounts. So we um, yeah, had a look at all the status messages in Austria um, because they're also the, um, the anti-crawling measures of, of WhatsApp are, are quite weak. And yeah, as you can see, um, there are different uh, things that people um, just write on the internet inside their, their WhatsApp status message. And um, yeah, we can use this information with the phone number, the unique identifier, to then go back um, to the actual people who are writing these uh, things. So for example, Nacktschnecken um, züchten, so raising slugs. I don't know what kind of hobby this is, but um, if we take this, we can take the phone number, type it into uh, Facebook, and we get the Facebook profile of this person uh, doing this weird thing. Another status message uh, we found in Austria, surely drunk. Again, we then find <laughs> the Facebook um, profile of this user. WhatsApp status messages for finding a job. Well, it works. This one I won't translate. Again, there is a Facebook account <laughs> for this user. Or this one. It's not the Fachhochschule. It's Walt Disney Animation Studios. 
Yeah, as you can see, a uh, phone number is uh, very unique and uh, can be used uh, to link different um, information from multiple uh, social networks and online services uh, to get uh, information out of these uh, networks where you don't expect it at first uh, sight. The second um, privacy challenge uh, I would like to talk about uh, is user discovery in messenger apps. And today's messenger apps usually, uh, usually uh, don't require the user to, to build up a friends list. So this happens automatically um, in the background by using the user's um, address book that is stored on the phone. So the, the app uploads the user's address book um, to the server, usually uh, during setup and every time the app is, um, is uh, started. And then the server compares the contained phone numbers uh, with the numbers that are registered uh, to the service for example, WhatsApp. And then the server returns a subset um, of all the phone numbers that are um, also registered in this uh, online service. And the client is then able to, to build up this, uh, this friend li friends list. And the big question is now, um, is it possible to um, do some kind of privacy aware user discovery, which means that the user lookup should be possible without uh, actually revealing the address book to the service provider or uh, to other uh, users. And there are several failed strategies. And this is interesting because um, smartphone messengers exist for nearly a decade now. And no really good solution was brought uh, up yet. And I would like to show you some of the uh, failed uh, strategies we saw in the past uh, few years. So for example, one idea was yeah, hashing the phone numbers. So instead of just uploading the real numbers, um, we just use some, um, some hash function and then just upload um, the hashed uh, representations of the phone numbers that can also be used for a number comparison. The problem, of course, is there's a very limited number of phone numbers, and this allows um, the generation of rainbow tables. And if you look at um, how many phone numbers um, there are worldwide, so um, phone providers, so Wikipedia says uh, there are around um, 2,400 um, phone providers worldwide. So the theoretical number of phone numbers per provider is usually uh, 10 million. Um, so this means, means that uh, 24 uh, billion uh, phone uh, hash values have to be um, calculated. And um, if you look at how many hash calculations a good uh, GPU can do nowadays, that's a lot. So the time required for generating uh, all these hash values um, yeah, is in the low, um, lower seconds. Of course, this estimation is not entirely correct because, for example, uh, it does not take uh, into consideration the disk writes that are needed to um, store the actual rainbow tables, but it gives you an impression that the generation of such a rainbow table is not a hard problem at all. And if a service provider wants to reveal the numbers, then it could um, just create um, a hash a rainbow table and then upload just the hash values, tell everyone we are privacy aware because we are just uploading the hash values, but in the background they have the rainbow tables for linking them to the, to the real phone numbers. There were other ideas, for example, adding something to the phone number in order to make um, the, the number of combinations uh, bigger. For example, um, we have other information stored in the address book, so for example, just adds the uh, name of the person um, and then calculate the hash value of the phone number concatenated uh, with the uh, name. But of course, this also does not work because everyone stores uh, their contacts in a different way and uh, it's, it's not possible uh, to, to create a unique hash value uh, for, for comparison. Another option, uh, Bloom filters. So uh, Bloom filter is a space uh, efficient probabilistic uh, data structure that um, can be used to test whether an element uh, is a member of a set or not. And the idea is to use this uh, Bloom filter uh, uh, client side, so move the number comparison to the client. And um, there also needs to be something that prevents um, the, the, the client to find out all the numbers that are registered to um, a service. So um, you could use, for example, uh, Charm's uh, blind signature uh, scheme to avoid leaking the entire list uh, to the client. 
problem uh, with the Bloom filters is um, they have to be um, downloaded to the client every time the contact list is updated. And the contact list, for example, in WhatsApp usually is updated when WhatsApp uh, is launched, so uh, quite often. And um, if you think of uh, WhatsApp with its 1.3 uh, billion uh, users, um, this Bloom filter would be around 5 gigabytes. And downloading 5 gigabytes every time uh, WhatsApp is launched is not um, a solution that will work uh, in, in the real world. So what are the other um, solutions um, different providers came up with? So in WhatsApp, just a clear text is uploaded of the phone numbers, so they don't really care about privacy where um, user discovery in the first place, so it's also a solution. Um, there are apps like, for example, Threamer that allow you to replace uh, the phone number with some random ID um, instead of the phone number. Um, then again, um, you have to build up your own friends list because uh, you can't do this uh, comparison uh, at all with these random IDs. So this is an optional um, method and uh, also Threema supports uh, uploading uh, at least hash values of, uh, of phone numbers. Yeah, you could upload uh, the hash values. That's for example what Wire um, or Signal or other messengers uh, do. Signal also says, um, well, we're open source and we just give you the promise um, that the numbers are not stored. And of course, it's also a solution. You could trust the service provider, but um, is there a solution that you trust it, but also verify what the service provider uh, says? And that's a solution that uh, Open Whisper Systems, the developers of, of Signals, uh, Signal recently uh, came up with. And the idea is um, to do um, secure remote computation. So the goal is uh, that, on the one hand, uh, confidentiality uh, of, of input values and results is, is enabled, and the integrity of the computation is also private. There are different methods for um, enabling this uh, secure remote computation. So you could do it with cryptography, so for example, homomorphic encryption is possible for uh, a very limited set of, um, of algorithms, of um, operations, and it's also very slow. Or you can do it uh, with trusted computing. And um, yeah, Signal came up with the idea of using uh, trusted computing for uh, this privacy-aware uh, user discovery. And they use Intel uh, SGX, so the, the software guard uh, extensions that were introduced uh, only a few years ago for Intel processors. And this allows uh, user processes to allocate um, private and protected memory regions. So uh, these memory regions are then encrypted and not readable from outside this uh, SGX. And there are also mechanisms for integrity verification, both local and remote. And yeah, there's a remote attestation uh, service uh, through um, a system called Intel Attestation Service. Um, and the idea is, uh, so usually uh, you use this system, for example, for DRM. So uh, the uh, client software is remotely um, checked. And so the server can, for example, uh, find out if the, if the player for some, uh, for some protected movie uh, is in a correct state or not. And what um, Open Whisper System now proposes is uh, turning this around and uh, using this uh, on the server, the SGX on the server, to allow a user to verify that the software that is running on the server is in the correct state. And everyone can look uh, inside the code and can see that um, they don't uh, store the phone numbers that are compared uh, in their user discovery service. So um, usually when the phone book is uploaded uh, to the server, um, the user does not know what, what actually happens to the phone uh, numbers that were uploaded because uh, it's a remote system and uh, the computations that happen there um, are not visible to the user. But with this uh, SGX, the user is now able to do a remote attestation, um, can um, see and verify if the code 
um, of the uh, user um, discovery service is exactly the code and that the, the, the user was able to, um, to verify the source code um, that it could download. And then, yeah, the address book is uploaded inside the SGX uh, via an uh, encrypted connection and stays inside this verified code for number comparison. Of course, they are still there in, in clear text inside this SGX, but it's not possible to look inside from the outside and the user knows that the code inside, that is running inside the SGX, does nothing malicious. Of course, one big problem are side channels. So if you look at some number comparison code that looks like this, um, you can see that um, based on memory access patterns, it's still possible uh, to find out which numbers um, are in the user's contact list and which are not. So um, if the contact list so the, uh, or the, the registered users list um, is known to the service provider, so the number of registered phone numbers is usually known even to a private messenger like, sig like Signal, and then you do this comparison, um, you can see uh, which memory regions are accessed and which are not, and based on this it's fairly easy for the um, provider to find out which numbers uh, are in the user's contact list and which are not. So to prevent the side channels, um, we have to, uh, the, the problem that observation of memory access uh, is possible and we have to eliminate uh, this, um, this possibility. This research field um, is well known and um, well studied, so it's a um, research field of oblivious uh, RAM. However, none of the existing methods here work really well for privacy-aware contact discovery, mostly because um, usually these systems work well for um, hash tables that have a limited number of keys, but um, then um, large values. And in this case, the values are almost or are zero, and we have a huge number of, of keys, the different uh, phone numbers. And also another problem is that this encrypted RAM that is supported by SGX is only uh, 128 megabytes uh, large, and that's not enough for storing the entire list of registered users for a social network like uh, WhatsApp with uh, over 1 billion users. So this um, list has to be uh, on the outside of the SGX, uh, which again makes it difficult uh, to prevent side channels. The solution that um, Open Whisper Systems then came up with is an oblivious uh, generation of the hash table uh, containing the contact list, or better, the contact lists, because um, they use a concept where the, the batch different um, contact uh, user discovery requests and then um, process them uh, inside this batch, which makes um, a better performance. And then they also have uh, concepts for content, uh, constant time comparison of the contacts, so that it makes no difference if the contact uh, was found in the list or not. And also the, the rights to the hash table uh, happen regardless um, of whether a comparison was successful or not, so that it is not possible anymore um, to derive um, contents of the contact lists um, by observing um, memory access patterns or some other uh, time-based side channels, uh, for example. So this concept was proposed by Maxim Mullinspike um, of Open Whisper Systems in September um, of this year, and. They say it's scalable to, to billions of users, so it should be um, possible for uh, even social networks like, uh, like WhatsApp. And they now internally test this system and will deploy it to the Signal Messenger over the next few months. Um, if you want to look inside, it's, it's open source. You can find it on GitHub and uh, check the, the code. Also commented it. One, one problem of this is, of course, that um, you now have just another um, trust anchor. And this time, the trust anchor is not at the service provider, but you move it to Intel. So um, you have to trust that this hardware-based uh, security platform of SGX um, is trustful 
and um, this remote attestation service um, also does not work without um, Intel involved. So, yeah, another party uh, comes into the play, but uh, I still think it's a very interesting um, new concept, and I'm very eager to see how this um, yeah works then in the in the future. So to conclude this, um, more and more online services uh, nowadays require valid phone numbers for sign up and linking phone numbers to humans um, is often easier than expected and um, even if, uh, possible to bring up um, or link different um, online services uh, together and then uh, extract data that you wouldn't expect um, to be extractable. And privacy aware user discovery is a really challenging uh, problem, but this new approach based on, on hardware, not on some intelligent algorithms or cryptography, uh, is an interesting uh, concept that was, interest, uh, was introduced recently. Of course, not all services will um, adapt this, this kind of um, privacy-aware uh, user discovery because they want to build this social graph and uh, won't give up on this because it's their business model. So um, we won't see uh, WhatsApp um, using uh, such a, um, a system because yeah, that's th their business model and uh, Facebook would like to uh, know uh, who is connected to whom and that w that this is what makes um, WhatsApp worth uh, several billion uh, dollars. Okay, thank you for your attention.